Hello everyone, so I was waiting just to give some people uh, some more time to arrive, um, but um, welcome to our ALGO Biotechnology Seminar. Um, thank you very much to everyone for joining us today. My name is Pauline Clifford, I'm the Marketing Manager, um, broadcasting live from here at the Scottish Association for Marine Science uh, in Oban, Scotland. Um, we're also referred to as SAMS and um, we are a partner of University of Highlands and Islands, which is also abbreviated as UHI. Uh, so we welcome many of you, we believe from all around the world today. Um, we've uh, just a reminder of how truly global the interest of algal biotechnology is. Um, and we, yeah, very, very happy to, to, to have you here today. SAMS is one of the biggest and oldest marine science research institutions in the UK. Uh, we date all the way back to 1884. We've got a very interesting history uh, going back to the man who coined the term oceanography. Uh, algae research is actually one of our biggest strengths, although we do a lot of different research um, across. I'll just share an uh, image here. Um, so hopefully you can all see that. Um, so SAMS actually covers, yeah, we cover a whole range of, um, of research topics. Um, algae being in there, but we also work heavily with Arctic, we work with aquaculture, uh, deep sea marine energy, a whole, a whole range of um, expertise in, in various areas of marine science. Um, so that's who we are, so you know who the, who's actually delivering this session today, um, but please go over to sams.ac.uk uh, if you'd like to learn more about our institution, if you do not already know who we are. Um, so I will just stop sharing this. So just a reminder that the schedule for the event today is on the Eventbrite page. Um, I also included it in the email that went out this morning as well. And um, there is a Q&A function. So please ask questions using the Q&A function. It should be at the top of your screen. Um, and we are uh, monitoring those questions throughout the event. Um, all attendees' mics and cameras are turned off. Uh, so this is an anonymous event. We can't see you or hear you, um, but feel free to if you if you're OK with disclosing your name in the chat, you can. But if you want to remain anonymous, please join as a guest and type your messages without giving any personal details. Um, others pe people will see this. Um, we are recording this event and we'll share this on our YouTube channel and I'll send out the link to everybody after the event once we put it up on YouTube, probably within the next 24 hours. Um, but I will email that out to you. Um, so you can watch it back if you want to go back and watch this wonderful event again. Um, so on screen today, um, we are joined by a few people. Um, so I will start with just uh, quickly introducing, uh, we have Matt, Matt Davey, Dr. Matt Davey, who is Senior Lecturer in Algal Biotechnology at SAMS um, and Programme Leader for the MS or Master's Algal Biotechnology and Bioeconomy course, which we'll be covering today. Um, we are also joined by Pooja Kumari, Dr. Pooja Kumari, who's a lecturer in macroalgal research at SAMS. Just give us a little wave, guys. <laughs> and we also have Helen Berry, who is the programme administrator. Um, I don't know if that's your actual official title. Um, she's admissions and all things um, admin for the course um, and for postgraduates here at SAMS as well. Um, so we are going to start today. We will actually also be joined, hopefully, by uh, one of our students on the master's programme at the moment, and also Dr. David Green, at who's a molecular microbiologist here at SAMS. Um, they are currently in labs. So they're hoping to join at half past 12. So hopefully all that will, um, will, uh, will work. <laughs> um, so I am going to now hand you over, take us all off screen. Uh, I'm going to hand you over to Dr. Matt Davey now, who's going to talk a little bit about. Um, oh, there we go. Yep, that's sharing. Um, he's going to talk about algal biotechnology. Why you should get involved? Um, a bit about his own experience and a little bit about the the program as well. So go for it. Over to you, Matt. OK, thank you so much um, and thank you everybody for, for joining today. Um, it's great. We've got a, a very international audience and interest in the course. So, uh, yeah, you're all very welcome. Um, so, Pauline, I guess you can see the screen. OK, um, full screen. 
So yep, I shall I'm yeah. carry on. OK. Um, second. Yeah. So I just thought I would start with um, by explaining what, in my terms, what, what the definition of algae pie technology is. Um, and it's a very broad um, definition, a very broad scope. Um, but generally, it's it's for study and manipulation of algal physiology and ecology for innovative uh, purposes. So we can go all the way from learning how the algae behave in the field, um, for both micro and macro algae, how we can scale this up and what applications we can use all this algae biomass for. So it's a very, very broad remit. Uh, and that remit is covered by these sort of four main areas. Um, and this is what we call advances in high volume, low value products. This is where we need lots and lots of algae uh, to produce essentially quite low value products, such as um, the diesel, the bioethanol, AD, um, bioremediation, uh, fertilizers, all the way down to things like what we call the advances in low volume, high value products. So this is where we need much smaller volumes of algae for to make very high value uh, commercial products. And this is where we start looking at things like um, nutraceuticals, vitamins, um, novel proteins, pigments and, and uh, antioxidants, for example. So during the course, uh, we hope to cover most of these topics um, in, in the whole area. Um, but generally, this is a, a very broad overview of, of, of some of the things we need to help solve these bottlenecks in, in the algae biotech. Um, so we have species diversity, we have economics, we have ecology, um, and the whole range of omic uh, technologies uh, for adult and sort of disposal in, in the labs. So by during the course uh, over the 12 months, by dipping in and explaining some of these techniques um, and areas, we help to you know, incrementally advance um, the, the algae biotech uh, sector. So just a bit about me. Um, yeah, so I'm uh, Matt Davy. Um, I'm a, a I'm now an associate professor in in uh, in in uh, at, at Sam's here at UHI, and I do a lot of work in in algae biotechnology and ecology. So so my background is in um, sort of extremophile um, and sort of climate change research um, in in plants um, and in algae. Working from um, Bangor in, in Wales to Sweden as my undergrad and my PhD in Durham. And then in Sheffield, looking at Arctic Alpine plant systems and metabolomics, and then spent 12 years at Cambridge doing a lot of work on, on algae biotech and ecology. Um, and then in 2020, um, came up here as a PI um, in SAMS. So my interest, as I've mentioned, I, I, half of my work is in uh, sort of learning about how algal how, how the species actually function, how the cells function in terms of their metabolite composition and their physiology. Um, and how we can use that information for um, sort of biotechnology and innovation. So whether it's materials and nutrients, how to actually um, induce the algae to actually make uh, products that are commercially of interest. So half of my work is actually on sort of ecology and physiology, and the other half is on the biotech world. On the um, ecology side, so you'll see um, a lot of my work is based in Antarctica, looking at um, snow algae blooms, so these are algae that can survive and grow very fast at very low temperatures and high light. So ecologically, it's very interesting. Um, and the other half of this, these, of these interests are how we can use some of these algal strains, not, not necessarily always the, the snow algae ones, um, for products such as using um, algae for alternative pink uh, pigment products, such as these, these um, projects we have, for example, with, with Living Inc uh, and with CCAP. So rather than just having uh, sort of petrochemical based um, inks, we can start using a lot of inks from algal sources. And of course, there's, there's huge amounts of colours in there. And then we go all the way, um, not just on Earth, but a lot of these um, algal applications can can be used for the space sector in astrobiology and in space biotechnology. So algae will have a, an important role um, in a lot of these sort of colonization um, for, for Mars and these lunar applications. So either it's artificial soils, um, oxygen production um, or CO2 uh, uptake, 
um, there's a lot of interest um, and applications for this at the moment. So yeah, so, I, so I'm really, really sort of interested in how these species grow, where they grow um, in terms of ecology and env environmental physiology, but also um, taking that information um, and using it for, for innovation. So what do we do at SAMS? Um, so SAMS, as, as Pauline mentioned, it, we're part of the University of Highlands and Islands, and you can see on this map down the bottom, we have Oban to so Edinburgh and Glasgow. Uh, then so Oban is um, about two hours to the northwest of Glasgow. So the UHI is a collection of um, campuses across the whole of Scotland, going all the way from uh, near Glasgow up to Shetland. So we'll be based um, down in Oban, right on the west coast of Scotland uh, in the Highlands. And you can see the pictures there, what it looks like on a sunny day like it is today. So we set up this, this course, um, this 12 month algae biotech and bio, bioeconomy masters. It, it's a taught masters. Uh, it's a new course. So we had our first um, set of students starting this year. It's 12 months taught full time. Um, there's, it's all in person. There is one R module that, that you do online, uh, but that's still online being based uh, here at SAMS. The closing date is Monday 3rd of June uh, in 2024. This year, um, there is a minimum number of students uh, to make the course viable, but we're, we're well on uh, target for that. Um, and if, if you want to come, your, your induction week, your starting week will be August, uh, last week in August 2024. So not that far away when you think about it. <laughs> so the course is split uh, between six modules. Um, in the first semester, we, we have key skills uh, for algae biotech uh, led by Dr. Callum White. The R module, um, this is led by Dr. Andrew Duncan. Um, this is at Inverness. This is the online module. Um, and then Dr. Pujar Kimari uh, is leading the uh, biological life cycles. And both the R module and the managing biological life sciences is also shared with with other people um, at, at the university and um, with with the with the ACES course. So you're not alone. You'll be joining a much wider network of, of students. But in semester two in January, there's the Blue Biotech course led by Professor Stanley. Uh, we then have the omics um, for metabolomics and, and genomics led by David Green. And then we have the scale up and processing uh, which led by myself and I also lead the research dissertation module. So over the course of the 12 months, you get a very good sort of theoretical background. The semester two is very practical based, um, so we also have the, the lectures, but it's much more hands on. So for example, the students today are harvesting uh, over algae from these large 70 litre bioreactors, for example. We also take a lot of um, care and pride in the extra activities that, that we that we do here. So these are activities that, that aren't assessed, but we think they're, they're incredibly important in networking and for your mentorship and career progression. So these are seminars, these are conferences we, we want you to go to um, in, in the UK. These are uh, British Ecological Society, Phycological Societies, IBIOIC. Um, so at the moment we've had conferences in, in Glasgow, in Manchester, they'll be going to Cambridge. I've had another one in Glasgow. Um, so we, we're, we're getting the, the students getting out there, um, networking, seeing how other people do argue biotechnology. And that's incredibly important uh, in this uh, in this sector. So that's me. So I'm uh, yes, I'm Dr. Matt Davy. I'm, I'm the program leader. The other people you might uh, engage with is Helen Berry, the course coordinator. Um, Shona McGill is the Head of Student Services and Quality Manager, and Pauline is the Marketing Manager, and uh, he's also on the call today. The other thing we want to mention is the CCAP. Um, so this is a, um, a government-funded, um, UK government-funded research centre, um, and this is one of the largest and oldest algae culture collections in the world. Um, so this is also based at SAM, so we, we collaborate quite heavily with, with CCAP and their algal um, biotech applications like the ARIES scale up system. So I'll be working with, with CCAP quite often uh, on this course. The entry requirements. So um, on a UK equivalent, this is what we call a, a, a minimum of a 2-2 honours degree in a STEM related subject. So ideally biology or other biological study. 
there is quite a lot of uh, biochemistry and genetics in semester two. Um, but yeah, if, ideally, if you've got a biological background, uh, that should be absolutely fine. There are other routes, but this would have to be uh, assessed on your application and, and based on your interview as well. If English isn't your first language, um, there are university uh, rules about um, IELTS scores um, for, for English language written um, and spoken tests, um, but Helen will be able to provide more information about that. So if you do get to once you've submitted, we assess your application and um, then all the applications um, are required to attend an interview, either that's online uh, or in person here at SAMS. OK, uh, the, one of the other key questions is fees. Um, so the home fees, um, there's always a, a cost to these courses, unfortunately. Um, so we have home fees um, just over nine and a half K. Uh, there's a discount if you are uh, a UHI alumni. There's EU fees, um, so this is similar to, to the UK one. And then there's international, uh, which is uh, just under £15,000. So these fees are payable, payable in advance um, ahead of that academic year. So with the fees, obviously the, the next question we get quite often is, is the scholarships. So we don't have a set scholarship just for this course, uh, but there are scholarships and bursaries um, either perhaps in, in, in your own country or, or, you're, or you're aware of that you can apply for. Um, and Helen has Helen Berry has a list of um, scholarships um, from, from, from the UK and, and around the world that you could apply for. Do note there's, uh, there's quite often deadlines um, with the scholarship. So please, if, if you're thinking of starting this year, um, have a look at the scholarship deadlines for those because they, they might be closing quite soon. OK, so the application process. So if you go onto the UHI website, you can click on on the course. There's um, there, there's an apply tab there. So and you just basically follow through uh, the, the, the instructions on, on the apply tab. And then then we could then UHI will pick it up um, when it goes through the, through the pipeline from there. OK, um, so in terms of contact, if you've got any questions, um, you know, Feel free to email uh, myself or, or Helen Berry. Um, we can answer any questions about about the course or um, life in Oban or, or any other questions that you might have about, about the course. So please do that. OK, I shall stop there. Um, I'd also like to introduce Kristen, who's just arrived from her practical. Um, so um, if you want to quickly say hello, Kristen. Yeah, so uh, Kristen's one of our um, current students on, on the course. So if you've got any Q&A um, questions about um, from a student's point of view, um, you, you can ask Kristen during during the call as well. So um, thanks. thanks, Matt. Okay. That's great. Can you stop sharing your screen? Sorry, and we can. Yeah. Oh, there's Kristen. Hello, we can see you now. Thanks, Kristen, for joining us. So you're running from one lab over to another area, probably running all over Sam's, but thank you very much for joining us today. Um, thanks for that, Matt. Um, I am just going to take you off screen here. So, um, yeah, thanks, for that, thanks, Matt, for that, that overview. And um, my apologies, you are an associate professor now. I apologise, I apologise, I forgot. <laughs> so congratulations. Um, so, yeah, that was terrible of me. Um, but uh, yes, associate professor now, Matt Davy. Um, so I'd just like to now bring on Dr. Um, Pooja Kumari, who is just going to talk about the module that Pooja um, delivers, which is biological life cycles uh, module, ma uh, micro and macro algae, um, and talk about how she's going to talk about how she got into algal biotech. So I can bring you on screen just now. Here we go. And over to you. Thanks, Pauline. So uh, hi, I am uh, Dr. Pooja Kumari. I am one of the module leader of one of the shared module, Managing Biological Life Cycles of Micro and Macro Algae. So this module is basically, it's an, like an introductory module uh, where you will be introduced to the amazing world of algae, from minuscule phytoplanktons to giant kelps, what they do, what, how, why they are important, and we cover some basic concepts to the applied ones in algal biology, such as algal diversity, systematics, their evolutionary history, different life cycles and strategies, how you can manipulate them for obtaining any high value 
products for commercial applications, and we also cover some binary binary concepts. Well, I feel this module on this module, you may be you will learn more about some seaweeds rather than on micro algae. It's quite a little biased towards seaweeds, and you will learn more about the physical, biological, technological, and managerial parameters that govern seaweed aquaculture production. For instance, the principal commercial uh, important species, their population genetics, breeding techniques used for their farming and farm management. And we also give you tools of our in-house facilities that Matt mentioned about our culture collection, CCAP, and CV nursery and CV farm. So it is like from lab to the field experience, giving you a, a glimpse how the algae industry works from, um, how to say, a uh, small algae world to the large wide application uh, side of the algal biotechnology course. Then uh, we on this module will also learn more about. Uh, sorry, we will also we also cover some some aspects. Uh, uh, some of aspects about the. Uh, population genetics and as well as uh, like uh, current debates and issues and challenges that faces see with uh, sustainable uh, global expansion. For example, climate change impacts diseases, their molecular diagnostics and mitigation strategies, biosecurity policies and regulations. Overall, there are like 12 lectures delivered on this module from experienced and learned staff. And you have some two practicals. We also do sessions of presentations, which are topic based. You can select so, uh, some topics and some research papers from uh, current, uh, which are more currently uh, relevant to algal biotech sectors. And this, and this is like an uh, two way interaction between the tutors and the students, and also like sharing knowledge. So you also gain experience of uh, presentation skills and how to uh, uh, and gain confidence while doing these presentations. So yeah, as such, it's uh, uh, we are excited to welcome you here at SAMS on this uh, exciting course of algal biotechnology, and I hope we will be you will get uh, more trained instead of that techniques and trainings in algal biotechnology course and the amazing world of the algae. Thank you. This, this was the module and about me. I am a lecturer at uh, SAMS. I joined SAMS last year as a lecturer in, in uh, macroalgal research. My background is was not primarily in LG. I came from a chemistry background. I had my bachelor's in chemistry and postgrads in biochemistry with specialization in microbiology. So I was introduced to this uh, world of CVs uh, during my PhD when I joined uh, a lab of Dr. C.R.K. Reddy at one of the national CSIR labs that is Council of Scientific Industrial Research in India. They have like 35 labs all over the India covering all the STEM subjects. So that was the first time where I was introduced to micro as well as macro algae, and I was amazed with the diverse diversity of seaweeds, especially the red ones, the tropical red ones, they are very, very beautiful. If you see them in field, especially. So from there, I started my journey and I did my PhD in lipid biochemistry and their physiological roles in environmental adaptation. So after my PhD, I did like uh, four different international postdocs by gaining four uh, competitive international postdoctoral scholarships like uh, uh, agricultural research or organization postdoc in Israel and then Blostein Fellowship, Chair Spears and Marie Curie here in UK and University of Aberdeen. And during my entire uh, research work, I my research has been mostly focused on how these algae adapt to different climate conditions, their ecology and stress physiology, both biotic and abiotic. And Currently, I'm more interested in developing breeding technologies for brown algae and algal disease. So yeah, this is me. Thank you. Thank you, Pooja. Thank you very much for that overview. Um, OK, hang on for a second.
thanks for that. It's really interesting. Um, both you and Matt have got some journey through algal biotech. My goodness. Um, so yeah, ask the expert. Uh, the experts, everybody. Um, they're they're here now. So we're now moving on to a bit of an open Q and A. Um, so I'm actually just going to bring everyone on the screen now. So um, we're not. So there's a Q. Just there's a, quite a few people who joined a bit later. So it was just to say that there is a Q&A function at the top of your screen. Uh, so you can type in any questions that you might have about algal biotech and about our course and um, about careers, things like that. Um, so if you would like to uh, put any questions in, please do. Um, I've got some questions in the meantime while we while we wait for people to, to ask some questions. Um, I think for me is um, the career opportunities. So we're seeing more and more uh, from industry in terms of um, the need for algal biotech hands-on skills. Um, and I just wondered maybe, maybe Matt, if you want to go first about just sort of talking about what career opportunities are kind of the hot, the hot careers at the moment in algal biotech. I don't think we covered that yet, have we? No, not yet. No, but that's right. So, um, so part of this course um, sort of remit was, was really to to address some of that balance um, where we're seeing uh, you know, a large sector increase in the number of companies um, and not just sort of startup companies, but some of the multinational companies going into that algal uh, biotech sector. And whether that's just growing algae or using algae as, as ingredients, um, uh, but to do that, you obviously need um a, a workforce to to actually understand how algae grow um, and what you can do with it so this is uh, we've already had yeah emails from companies asking when our graduates are going to finish because they want to employ them um, so yeah so it's it's having that sort of practical and theoretical background of how to do sort of algae biotech how to grow it um because not all species are the same it's not easy um as i'm sure the students are finding out <laughs> and um and how because it is essentially farming when you when you scale up uh, if you're doing this at scale um it's you know you are treating it as a crop and there's pests and diseases and things go wrong they need fertilizer they need um and anything you would do say growing a large crop um and keeping things very sterile as well so if there's also that side of it then the other side of it is obviously the 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 other skills you're learning, such as genetics, metabolites, all those lab skills um, for, for doing this sort of work, routinely work in sort of much smaller labs where you're doing the, the, the biotechnology side of things. So, yeah, so we're, we're, whatever avenue you want to go into afterwards, whether it's PhD or um, academia or going as an advanced technician um, in, in industry, this is, yeah, these are all valid uh, career routes for, for after, the, after doing this course. Um, Kristen, I don't know if you want to mention any, <laughs> anything from, from your point of view. Yeah, no, there really is quite a big way on how you actually grow them. So for my dissertation project, I'm growing three species of algae and they all prefer different ways of growing, um, which is quite interesting to learn about <laughs> and look at, to be honest. Um, I, I don't really have much to say about careers as it. Yeah, no, there is quite a lot of different areas that you can go in because you think you're specialising by going into algae. Is it? You're not really. There's just like so many branch routes that you can go down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And is there anything specifically that you want to get into yet? Are you still exploring options, Kristen? Oh, uh, Matt's going to hate me. I don't want to do a PhD. I think I've said that. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's uh, yeah, no, I've yeah. always said that I, I would much rather do industry. So I, yeah. I think that's my goal is to go down into yeah. industry and hopefully scaling up growing algae would be ideal. If you're staying in algal biotech, then in algae research, then this is good. So um, yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's good. Well, well, good luck, Kristen. And um, mm -hmm. thanks, thanks for sharing that. And um, I see also you've got the Aries facilities behind you there, Matt. Obviously, not it's a picture. Um, uh, and have you really have you enjoyed using? Obviously, at Sam's we've got you know we've got these amazing facilities. Um, I think we stand out actually in in terms of the course across the UK in terms of what facilities we can offer. So, have you enjoyed, Kristen, using? Have you had much experience using the Aries facility behind you, which is the the, the scale up? Yeah. Um... Um, are. Uh, so both of my classmates currently right now are harvesting one of these so they're okay. draining and filtering all of the algae 
Um, there's four in total, and we've done three over the last day and a half. Um, so we're hoping to get the fourth one done today. Uh, we That's had, fun. yeah, it was kind of three different species of algae. Yeah, one was like a, a, a different strain. Um, and the, the one that we're harvesting today, spirulina, it gets harvested in a different way. So it's been interesting just even seeing a difference between how you har harvest like certain types or certain, mm. certain strains of algae. Yeah. Um, yeah. So these, I was using them for growing the algae for my dissertation project as well. So two of oh, my cool. species went into those as well. Um, oh, cool. Uh, so, yeah, no, they've been really fun to play yeah. with. So there's, yeah. there's this scale up module. So that the picture behind Helen, where you've got these small tubes of algae. Um, so we, we go from these small tubes in late January all the way up to these large 70 litre bioreactors. So so the students, um, they have their pet species, their pet strain, um, and then they have to take it all the way up to large scale and harvesting um, this sector as well. So yeah, yeah it's quite, quite an interesting one. Yeah, we've been having fun with our, our different types. I think we've all got nicknames for whatever species we've got. <laughs> <laughs> They've got really long names. I mean, I have to disclose that I'm not a scientist. Um, and sometimes when I see the names of these species, I'm like, how do you pronounce that? I don't even know where to start. Um, but I, I love the area facility. I always, whenever we walk past and there's there's some stuff growing in it, you're just like, this is so, so cool. It looks very, very sciencey. It's very cliched sciencey looking, isn't it? Um, but that, yeah, that that's great. I'm so so pleased that you've enjoyed some a lot of the different um, teaching facilities that we have here at SAMS and using CCAP is is absolutely fantastic opportunity. So CCAP has three thousand strains of of algae there, so it's pretty fascinating. Pretty fascinating. Um, so thanks for that. Um, and Kristen, are you enjoying the course? You know, how's life at SAMS? So for for everybody who's joining us today, SAMS is based as Matt said, in the west coast of Scotland, but we are in a rural, um, we are in a very rural uh, community, a rural location. Um, whilst we are, um, you know, two hours from Glasgow, we are right on the coast. Um, it's not the sort of uh, city student nightlife that you, you have here. But also, I know, Kristen, you were an undergrad here yeah. as well. That's right. So you've yeah, come, I, come I through. You're going, you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you were, you were already fine tuned to the west coast of Scotland before you came but um do you enjoy student life in Oban has that been yeah I, I feel like uh, student life is kind of what you make of it so the master's course is quite full on so there is times where you are just working but then there's other times where you do get to go and explore Oban and um go out drinking if that's what you really want but it's, it's it is a completely different nightlife compared to the cities I said it's kind of just what you make it if you have that group of people to go out with that you can have a good night anywhere I think um, yeah Evie said to mention that yeah the fact that I was an undergrad student and I came back to Sam surely that speaks for something <laughs> I've decided yeah we must have made some impression again. on you <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no we're delighted that you came back and to do this course and it's um yeah in its first year as well was um was brilliant it was really really great so we're, we're delighted that you you came back um but you won't not stay in for phd or anything but and <laughs> um, but we're we're getting you ready for the big big bad world out there um but, no, but that, there are, fantastic. There, there, there are lots of clubs as well i mean the if you like the outdoors so people quite like coming here do there's diving sailing skiing mountain biking rock climbing uh, you know it's a, every sort of outdoor sport there is you know you can there's snow on the mountains today. You can probably go skiing mm. this afternoon if you want to, um, and yeah. do sailing in the afternoon. Um, so it's um, yeah, there's there's that if you like that. Yeah, there's a local kayak club as well, mm -hmm. um, and you'll quite often find that people like because we all are like outdoors. So normally, if you're into something, you might think it's specific. Is that you'll find someone at this uni that actually does that, and they'll go out regularly and do that. Uh, for instance, one of the guys is super into surfing, so he goes out regularly and surfs. So like when one of the other students came, they were like, oh, I quite like surfing. He's like, well, I can just take you out. <laughs> so you do get yeah. that sense of community. And I think because it's um, so uh, Sam's quite a small university for, for everyone listening today. Sam's is quite a small university. Um, so, well, we do have about 160 students, but compared to like a big, huge 
you know, Edinburgh or Glasgow or something, we don't have like, we are fully marine science related um, education. So you're fully immersed in science and you're, you know, living with or studying with like minded people all doing some sort of marine science topic. Um, and but I feel like everybody when I see the students, you know, they kind of integrate with each other quite a lot, you know, so we have the aquaculture students that, that do six months here and they, they come from all over the world, the AC star a program, they tend to sort of can, can mix with well, the likes of yourselves as well and in, in the algal biotech masters. But and I find the undergrads, whether you're first year, fourth year, everyone seems to kind of uh, mingle together and do do similar activities and things. So um, it is quite a nice. Um, I mean, I'm saying it's a nice student community. I'm not a student here, but when I see yeah. the students, it looks like it's <laughs> um, yes. quite a, a friendly, welcoming kind of place. <laughs> So the start, obviously, we mingled a lot with the agriculture students that were here for six months. I said also the four years have been really welcoming, welcoming to us. So they've also like invited us out, and then you get to know some of the other years just by being with that um, Pearl, which is another one student. She uh, lives with the first years, so we have like that integration as well. So it's, yeah, it's quite nice. You, you do feel like you're only here for a year, so you're like, oh, I, I won't meet people, but you, you end up meeting everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and it's quite international as well, you know, mm -hmm. the, the other courses, you know, there's a lot of international students, so yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite a good network. Yeah, and, and international staff and lecturers as well, and um, yeah, well, that's great. And um, so I'm trying to think if there's other, we've still not got many questions, so everyone seems to be very uh, quiet on the questions, got a very shy audience, or maybe our information is so good you don't need to ask any questions. Um, let me have another look. Oh, here we go. Um, so PhD opportunities currently available at SAMS, in particular any associated with carbon capture methods. I've just published that one there. There was one definitely on HABs and then I can't remember what the other one was. Yeah, so all the PhD um, projects are advertised on the SAMS website under, under postgraduate study. Um, so best place to have, have a look is there. So quite often the PhD students will start in around about September, a similar time as as the masters. Um, but yeah, for, they can be they can be advertised any time throughout the year. So um, th but there are they have been projects on seaweeds and carbon capture I think in, in, in the past so um, so we, we can do that um, pretty pretty is probably the, the key person for, for the seaweeds and carbon capture to to contact them from, from that point of view. Um, I'll just put the link up in a minute um, for our find a PhD page there are some vacancies just now we also work with self-funded PhD students as well so if you want to propose a topic um, there's um, information about that, but that would be on a self-funded basis. Um, so I'm just finding the, we've got a couple just now. I'll put these up in the chat um, whilst I'm talking here. Um, this is, these are the vacancies that we have just now. Um, and you can have a look through there and I'll, in a minute, I'll post the self-funded PhD as well. Um, Another question. Thank you very much, um, anonymous users. Uh, is there anything threatening algae specifically related to human activity? Hmm, good question. Um, <laughs> and you're I'm putting you on the spot now, haven't I? Yeah. Um, um, I guess. In terms of human activity, I don't know. It's, it's someone... more increasing it rather. You might get more yeah. blooms, um, which could potentially cause some species to be like not as <laughs> abundant yeah. Yeah. than another. Yeah. Um, yeah we, we, we all know we, we've, we've seen you know, some of the research at SAMS, these marine heat waves. We're seeing these oceanic um, heat waves that are very warm. So obviously the ocean chemistry, the ocean temperature is changing. Um, and correlating that to some of these increases in, in blooms or the changes in species distribution patterns um, around the world. So it, it's hard to sort of put correlation and sort of causation with, with these things, but um, but we, we definitely know that you know, the, 
the the occurrence and the distribution and the abundance of these species is, is definitely changing. Um, whether that's due to, to climate change, again, it's probably our paper, so I don't know enough about that bit. But um, but yeah, it's so for example, some of these sargassum blooms um, in, in, in the oceans have these huge blooms that are affecting tourism, affecting um, sort of ecosystems in some in some countries. It's it's yeah, it is it is a problem. Um, but yeah, but I'll probably say quite often it's more more of a case there's more algae now than mm -hmm. um, it's in increasing in, uh, rather than decreasing. And certainly some okay. some of the work that I work on with the Antarctic snow algae work, you know, that's we're, but we're only now discovering where they are and how and how they might change in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's due to habitat loss. Um, if there's no snow, there's no snow algae. So that's that's, yep. what, that's what we're looking at. Um, no, very good question. <laughs> yeah, very good question. Yeah, you challenged you there. Um, so uh, a question for um, there's no more questions coming through. Let me just check just now. Um, a question I actually have would be to um, Pooja and Matt are um, what would be what would you say is your like a major career highlight for you? Something that really sticks in your head as like an amazing experience or um, the best job you've had or, the, you know, is there any sort of career highlight that you have that you'd like to talk about? If we're talking about why study algal biotech, is there any standout moments in your career where you thought, yeah, this is why I'm doing it? I'll put you on the spot now. <laughs> Peter, do you want to go first? <laughs> I'll, I'll try and formulate an answer in my head. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> so I think as we see algae, so there's a, you'd say, they are not only diverse, they have very diverse applications from food feed to biofuels or pharmaceuticals or cosmeceuticals. We don't know we are using algae every day, knowingly or unknowingly. So you can see, check your toothpaste or check your cosmetics which you're using. So they may have an algae in, ingredient. So as I see now with the renewed interest in algal biotechnology and to explore it for different applications, maybe in next 10 years or 15 years, you would be using more of the algae around you and you don't know. For example, one of the best would be the bioplastics from algae, maybe from seaweeds or from microalgae. So maybe you would be eating the ice cream, but you have nothing to throw. You would be eating along with the steaks or something that are derived from the seaweed hydrocolloids or bioplastics. So that is quite interesting. So yeah, so maybe I think they are one of the I would say nature-based solutions at present to address not only the climate change, but also ecosystem services. And uh, maybe also they can serve to some extent your food security kind of stuff. Because, you know, with the growing population as we are going on, there would be scarcity of the foods and algae are one of the best sources of vitamins and proteins and lipids as well as, for example, polyunsaturated fatty acids. So maybe there would be more food applications and more food coming in, maybe as condiments or as well as in fast foods. Uh, in future, in supermarkets, we'll find more of the maybe chips and that is has been added with some nutritious seaweeds or something like that. So yes, yeah, so you would see more of the seaweeds around you in future. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Pooja. Um, yeah, it's fascinating when you see a list of things that you just didn't even know algae was in a product you're eating or, yeah, it's it's fascinating. Um, so Matt, any highlights, career yeah, highlights? Um, just Other than being in the seminar? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, um, it, I guess in terms of highlights, you know, it's th thinking back to my 10 year old self many years ago in the 80s, where I wanted to be an astronaut working in space. I wanted to be a scientist. <laughs> I wanted to be an explorer. So this this sort of job is, you know, we'd be working in the space sector. We do exploration in Antarctica and working in these remote places. Yeah, you, know, you can do science, you can, you know, you can be a teacher and you know, things like that. So there's few jobs where your sort of childhood random lists of jobs you want to do when you're growing up, you can sort of tick all four of them or five of them. So yeah, it's it's quite an interesting sector where it's got applications in so many different areas. You can sort of take that forward and, and do all those different things. So, yeah, that's yeah, right. Great, yeah. great, great answer. That is, it is bizarre, isn't it, how you've gone 
space, Antarctica, like everywhere. <laughs> um, so that is that is that's a great answer, yeah. And I'm, I'm glad it all worked out for your ten year old dreams. That's what's been good. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to move over to our panel discussion. So thanks everybody for, um, I'll just check there's no more questions left. Um, no more questions. So I'm just going to move over to a 10 minute um, panel discussion or based on three questions I'm going to ask you. We might have covered some of them um, already, but we'll, we'll try and not repeat ourselves too much. Um, so I'm just going to put out a question and um, whoever wants to, to, to answer, we can, we can discuss. Um, my first question would be, so we'll have people join in from all sorts of different backgrounds, probably from industry, probably from some prospective students that maybe want to come. Um, how would you actually explain to them, like, why should they study and progress a career in algal biotech? You know, and wh where do you see algal biotech in 20 years time? Um, and I don't know if you've got any comments on on that question. Who would like to go first? Probably most like Matt and Pooja here for this. Well, Kristen, feel free to chip in at any point. Yeah, it's um, yeah. So it's what so where where we are now. Um, so we know much more about the the properties of the algae, and we know that it's, you know there's thousands and thousands of species of of algae across um, the, the tree of life. Um, we're only now looking at that genetic variation. Uh, and the, all these different properties that we that are still currently undiscovered. You know, we're still discovering new species. Um, and new metabolites and new functions to these things. So now we have much more genetic and sort of much more sort of bioinformatic information about these species. Um, the applications of those, um, you know, and together with a lot of these AI applications, we can actually mine that information much, much faster than we have done in the past. So what we're looking at is in terms of engineering biology using these strains uh, so we're not proposing that everyone will be eating just algae in the future, but what we're using, what we'll probably be seeing is algae being an important component to a whole range of, you know, foods and nutrients and, um, you know, uh, yeah, nutraceuticals and, you know, health food products, um, carbon sequestration, bioremediation. So using that as just a piece of a jigsaw for a more sustainable future. So. Um, so we're looking at you know, advancing this and engineering the biology, you know, understanding the biology and putting that in, into practice. So. Pooja? Thanks, Matt. Pooja, do you have anything to add to where you see algal biotech? And no, I think Matt covered it. Of the <laughs> Each of the algae, what they do or something. Just, I remember like once I read one article, like 100 things that algae do for a human, like how is it beneficial, starting from your hair to the toenails or something. So means the bizarre of the, I, I would say, beneficial effects of algae. So yeah, in the coming years, maybe we would be seeing, as I said before, more of the algal products, more of the al new algal applications, as we are uh, using more of the engineering biology and uh, underpinning the genetics of algae. So yes, we can we can say that there would be more of the algae around us. Yeah, in the absolutely. Thank you, Pooja. Um, no, that's great. Thank you very much for the that feedback. Um, my next question would be, what does it take to make it in this industry? So, what does it take to make it in the algal biotechnology field, whether that be research or or commercial? And if you've got any advice on maybe what sort of personality characteristics, knowledge skills would it take to sort of drive this field forward and you know achieve innovation and research excellence um do you have any advice oh we have dave green i think just joined us um so i don't know if you have if you have any advice on what skills you'd be i'm just going to quickly bring dave on thank you dave hang on um you're on mute i think Right. OK, thank you. I, I've just returned from lecturing. Uh, undergraduate. <laughs> no, that's, that's OK. That's I did. My, my excuse. I let everybody know that you might be joining late and that you are from one lab running across to here and things like that. So that's absolutely fine. Well, thank you very much for, for, for joining us at, at the last minute. I don't know, Dave, you maybe want to just actually we've got a bit of time to for you just to quickly introduce yourself and we'll go back to the, the panel discussion. I'll update you. Okay. Where we're at. Well, so uh, I'm a lecturer here. Um, my 
background uh, is a medical microbiology, but I'm a, so I'm a, a, a fully trained microbiologist in the classical sense of working with bacteria. Here at SAMS, um, I've specialized in the bacteria that live with algae, and I'm particularly interested in um, what those bacteria are doing or the beneficial aspects of those bacteria for the algae. So um, we're particularly interested in symbiotic relationships. So what the bacteria give to the algae and in turn what the algae give the bacteria back. Um, and so that's sort of the more classical research. Increasingly uh, over the last few years, um, we've been doing a lot of metagenomic work. So we're taking the, a sample, for example, a seaweed, we extract the total DNA, and then we reconstruct the genomes of all living organisms in that sample. So seaweeds in particular have very complex communities compared to a microalgae. Um, uh, and we're very interested in trying to understand who's there, what they might be doing, and then also how we can use that information to help um, promote the growth or a more resilient culture of algal, um, microalgae or, or seaweeds, for example. Um, so that's sort of my current research. That's and you can hear my voice is going after a lecture. <laughs> Already. An hour's lecture. Um, it's getting a bit rough. It's okay, we've only got 10 minutes left here and then you can go get some lunch too. <laughs> So thanks very much for joining us. The the topic we are we've, we've covered quite a lot of topics. Um, my question now to the panel is um, really to help people that have joined us today who are obviously interested in a career in algal biotechnology. And my question was, what you think it takes to make it an algal biotechnology field, and whether that be research or or commercial. If you've got any advice on maybe personality, correct, you know, characteristics, knowledge, drive, skills. Um, what would be your advice to make it get to where you guys are today? <laughs> yes, well, um, um, <clears throat> well, I think you, 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 you have to be interested in nature. You have to be curious um, and, and, not, uh, and be prepared not to accept somebody's answer as being the definitive answer. You've got to dig in and sort of, dig underneath the detail and you get into the detail underneath it. And um, so, yeah, so curiosity and, and not everybody is, is curious. You know, so, there are some people who, who seem to be just sort of insatiably curious. Um, they get very badly distracted. I think I'm partly in that category. Um, uh, so you need that and, and you need that enthusiasm to sort of keep on questioning things. So uh, particularly research and where you're trying to develop new products or processes where you often don't know what the answer is, you have to be prepared to take a lot of knocks. So things go wrong or things are just happening in a way that you don't understand or expect. And so you've got to, again, this is where the curiosity comes in. You've got to be able to sort of look around it and think around the problem and try different things out. And you know, nine times out of 10, they fail or they, they don't yield what you want, but you just have to keep on digging in all the time. So you have to, and ultimately, and I think, you know, Pooja, Matt um, would have all said this, you need a degree of passion and enthusiasm. If you don't have that, it's it's just really hard work. Um, and I, I sort I of describe it. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, you, you've got to be prepared to take the knocks and have to pick yourself off the floor and because it will happen quite often. Or you feel like you're banging your head against a brick wall and you've got to work out ways of, um, remaining sane and, uh, you know, and then also trying to think around the problem. And this is where you stop and talk to people. And that's why science is, you know, inherently collaborative because no one person's got all the answers and everybody's got slightly different experiences. And you, so you want to have a, a good network of people that you can chat to and run ideas by, um, you know, they listen, they argue with you back and you've got to be prepared to defend your position or, and be, but also be open to alternative opinions. But it's kind of like life. Relationships yeah. <laughs> are like that as well. Um, um, so it's, it's <laughs> not so different. But I think it's I think they're all really good comments to, to raise and good advice. And a lot of that's on the sort of personality side, characteristics, drive, motivation. Um, what about practical in terms of practical skills that are really required and particularly those that are going into industries or any comments on more yeah. Saying today, you know, with with all the bioreactor work and the scale up, um, 
you know, at the end of the day, you, you're there with a jet hose washing, um, washing the reactors and cleaning. So you've got to be prepared to roll your sleeves up, scrubbing, getting dirty. So it, it's all very fine. You know, part of some practicals we have, you're doing, you know, nanomolar concentrations of RNA and DNA and, you know, being very small scale. Um, so you've got to be quite focused from that point of view. But we have other practicals where, you know, you yeah you are scrubbing things with a brush trying to clean these reactors so the sort of sector is sort of both ends of that of that scales so during this 12 months um you can probably work out which part of that sector you like the the scrubbing and the the scale up or the uh that sort of detailed um genetic um sort of the, the metabolite part so there's hopefully there's, there's something for everyone but but definitely yeah it is a science that's sort of at the forefront of a lot of these techniques and going forward so there's again there's there's a lot to learn there's lots of ways that potentially you, you could take it in the future so it's not a, a fixed science at the moment and this is uh this is quite the sort of the, the forefront so it's it is sort of learning there's, there's obviously there's set techniques and ways of doing it but but at the same time it's it is sort of open for for going in, in any direction you want to take it in yeah <clears throat> just as i'm about to talk i'm coughing yeah. Um, thank you so much. Um, for, so for the other thing I've got to mention help. is the we have the seaweed farm here at Sam's as well. So we have part of, of the, um, the the have a seaweed nursery, the seaweed farm. We have the big uh, the lines outside in, in the lock. Um, so you go out. So last week we went yeah. on the boat to to the seaweed farm, looking at the seaweed farm, um, nursery. And, and the nursery. So there's there's the seaweed academy and so on. So it's um, you know most of the course is microalgae, but we do have that interaction with the mm -hmm. large seaweed farm here and there's very few sort of research-based seaweed farms in the world so we're, we're really lucky we've got one here that the students can actually um, work with yeah. and what yeah, one of the students is doing a dissertation me. project on the seaweed farm looking at eDNA and things so yeah it's also like you think micro and then you instantly are thinking oh you're preparing all the time but yeah the scale-up project's like all super hands-on and then with like macro seaweed you can actually be quite like detailed with it so it's not like one is strictly one thing and one's the other it's they're both like interlinked it's quite weird to think of it <laughs> you think micro and it's just small scale but no yeah great no thanks very much for your for your answer so we've got a couple of minutes i'm just going to throw one question out i might only have time for one of you to answer it um so my one here is your most interesting or obscure research finding that you've come across um, or any sort of really obscure or kind of mega interesting project you've worked on or discovered in the algal biotech field. Can you think of anything that's really blown you away or that's a difficult question maybe? Are there just too many? <laughs> well, many years ago um, I was isolating bacteria from uh, microalgae <clears throat> And we consistently isolated bacteria that were in the literature described as highly specialized oil degrading bacteria. And for a, for a wee while, we were a bit puzzled by that. Why would you find a highly fastidious organism that really only eats petroleum oil living with an algae? But the answer is actually quite simple. Uh, that's where all our petroleum oil came from first. So all the oil that we put in our cars comes from marine algae that were buried in several hundred million years ago in the oceans, in the shallow oceans, and then were buried under land and high pressure. And that's what gives you oil. So we think this relationship between the bacteria that live on the surface of these algae and algae themselves is, is very ancient because these algae were producing the oils before they were buried in the oceans and we dug them out. You know, we're talking 500 million years ago. So you know, it, it's not a revelation, but it, it just sort of suddenly made sense. Um, and so when you have big oil spills in the ocean, um, some of these highly fastidious bacteria just pop out of nowhere. Um, and they are the ones that help degrade and break down big oil spills. Uh, and they're living with algae all the time. That's their home. Mm. I think that for me, that's the best. We're about to finish the event and I think that's the best one to close on right now. <laughs> so. Algae's been here a long time. <laughs> yep. Yeah, no, that's absolutely brilliant. Thanks, Dave. No, I like that to close. Um, so uh, we're just about to close. I am going to just say 
thank you very much to all the participants today. Um, Helen has and myself have been putting some links in the Q&A that might help you if you're interested in actually coming onto the course. Um, those pages will have contact details as well for, for Matt and Helen um, if you want to um, pose any more questions. You can find Pooja and Dave Green on our People page as well um, on the SAMS website if you ever have any, any questions. Um, I'm going to uh, take everyone off the screen. I'm just going to, so thank you very much to everybody. I'm just going to close with this image, um, which is a quote, but now I'm taking everyone off the screen and it's taking me a while. Um, so I'm just going to share this, this quote that we've got from Saul Parton. Hopefully you can all see that. So um, the algae sector in the UK and internationally is rapidly expanding and there's an increased demand for skilled staff in this sector. Um, and courses such as ours will start to deliver experience, experience and knowledgeable personnel into these academic and industrial um, positions. So it's definitely, um, there's definitely a need for, for these skills in the industry. We've got lots of, we've got a couple other quotes as well that support this course, and um, that's obviously from Professor Saul Parton in Algae UK and University College in London. Um, and I just found that that was um, quite an interesting quote to, to um, encourage you to get involved in this um, in this industry. Um, and if you have any questions, please, please do um, get in touch. And we hope that you took away some um, inspiration from today and lots of information that will help you in your future career in algal biotech hopefully and I uh, wish you all very the, the best of luck with your careers and I will send out a recording of this and some more information on email after this event. So many thanks to everybody involved today and to everyone who joined from all over the world and hope to see you at SAMS one day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you.